Hello, my name is Stephanie Tanadini Lang and I work as a head of the medical physics team at the University Hospital in Zurich. My team has prepared a video for you to show you how out of magnetic resonance images, synthetic CT images can be prepared. If you have any questions about the topic or if you're interested in joining our group, please feel free to contact one of my team members or myself. My name is Ricardo Dalbello and I'm a medical physicist and postdoc. I will show you what are the clinical needs for synthetic CT in uh, radiation oncology. And I will do so by starting from the radiotherapy workload, workload. What you see here highlighted in green are the steps that are currently available and are currently used for um, treating patients. So we normally start with imaging and imaging includes always a CT scan. And additionally, most of the cases we might require an MR scan. The reason is that the MR is superior for distinguishing tumor from the healthy tissue. And uh, also it has a, a great soft tissue contrast. DCT instead is required for electron density uh, calculation and treatment planning. The two images have to be registered to each other in order to uh, deliver the same geometrical information. This uh, introduces some of the uncertainties within the workflow. We can then go to the treatment where the patient is positioned at the correct location through uh, X-ray imaging, such as KBKV or CONVIMCT. This is the standard workflow used for uh, most of the patients worldwide. And what we would like to introduce and develop further is the so-called MR-only workflow, where, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, all the imaging is substituted by MR imaging without additional uh, imaging radiation to the patient. The last step, the positioning and the monitoring of the treatment is already available at the University Hospital Zurich that is operating since 2018, a hybrid MR linac device, combining a linear accelerator for treatment and a MR for imaging in the same device. What is missing or what needs further development is the conversion of the MR image into a, a electron density map to the so-called synthetic CT. And this can be done by neural networks and artificial intelligence. Why would we like to do this? What are the benefits? The first one I've already mentioned it several times is the reduction of the radiation exposure to the patient. But then we will also eliminate the MR to CT registration uncertainty since both images are generated from the same scan. Uh, finally, we, we also simplify the workflow uh, and make it more cost-effective since we will have only one imaging modality. And this means that also the patient will need to go to only one uh, image device for preparing the treatment. How does it look like? Uh, at the top, you will see an example for a head and neck case, and at the bottom for a prostate case, where on the left you have the CT, and you see that uh, there is a poor soft tissue contrast. We mostly can see uh, the bones. And on the right, you have the um, MR, where you can clearly distinguish uh, the different organs. And in the top, for example, you see the yellow contour. Uh, this is a parotid gland. And at the bottom, always in the yellow contour, you have the prostate. And both organs are much easier to distinguish on the MR compared to the CT. We also have a table of all the advantages and disadvantages of each of the techniques and the combination of the two. I would just like to mention that at the moment, MR plus CT workflow is the um, current standard of care. So the next step will be going to MR only workflow. Now my colleagues will go into the details of how to technically convert a, um, MR into a synthetic CT. Thank you for your attention. Hello, my name is Agustina Lagreca and today I'll be presenting our work on MR only radiotherapy for head and neck cancer. Our data set consisted of 31 head and neck cancer patients treated with MR-guided radiotherapy at the University Hospital of Zurich between 2020 and 2022. The data set was split into 20 cases for training, five cases for validation, and six cases for testing. The model employed is called residual visual transformers, and it has achieved a state-of-the-art performances in several computer vision tasks, including synthetic city generation. 
It is able of incorporating local and contextual details through self-attention mechanisms, and it's publicly available. We decided to use three different models, each one trained on a different orthogonal view. The best model was selected based on the lowest mean absolute error for the three cases, and the outputs of the three models were then later merged and combined to have the final synthetic CT. The dosimetric analysis revealed that there were no differences in the dose volume histograms for different dosimetric points larger than 1% of the prescribed dose, which was 50 grays. Likewise, uh, the results of the global gamma analysis were excellent uh, using different criteria, the 50% and 90% of, uh, of the prescribed doses thresholds, and the 2% millimeter, 3%, 3 millimeter uh, criteria for the distance to agreement. Moreover, we studied the suitability of the synthetic CT scans uh, for autodelineation of several organs at risk by a commercial software solution. We compare these contours with the ones manually delineated on the MR images and the auto delineated on the original CT scans. The resulting DICE scores showed promising performances and agreements, proving once again the suitability of the proposed approach for MR only radiotherapy. If we compare it to previous studies, it is uh, difficult as they use different magnetic fields, different contrast, and different numbers of patients. But we can see that our approach achieved a very good performance, um, especially when looking at the mean absolute error. In conclusion, head and neck CT scans generated from low field MRI images achieved excellent dosimetric accuracy. The generated CT scans were also suitable, suitable for automatic delineation. And then the combination of the three orthogonal single view models achieve excellent image similarity metrics. This approach is suitable for MN only radiotherapy in head and neck cancer and brings it closer to a clinical implementation. Thank you. Hello, my name is Maria Lapaeva, and I'm pleased to present the project on generated synthetic CTs in the abdominal area. As Ricardo mentioned in the current clinical workflow, MR images are used together with CTs for the treatment planning. Eliminating CT images from the workflow will enable MR-only radiotherapy. This can reduce radiation exposure to the patient and introduce a more cost-efficient workflow. But the main question is how? Several methods have been proposed for generation of synthetic CT images with a neural network showing one of the best performance. However, there are almost no studies present for the abdominal region, which is characterized by the presence of mobile ear pockets affecting the dose calculation. And this is an additional motivation for our research. In our study, we analyzed the MRCT pairs of 168 patients treated in the abdomen. At first, we preprocessed the images and then used them for the neural network training. We use cycle gun architecture, which could be trained in unpaired fashion. For example, it could use the CT of one of the patients and the MR of another. After network training, we performed the geometric and dosimetric analysis between the synthetic CT images and the real deformed CTs. Let us now focus on the achieved results. Here in the middle, you will see the synthetic CT images generated with neural networks. The visual comparison shows that neural networks are able to generate a realistic result. Moreover, the location of air pockets highlighted in blue agreed with the original MR image even better on the synthetic cities produced by our cycle gun. The comparison of the image similarity metrics reveals that our study outperforms the state of the art with a mean absolute error of 70 Hounsfield units. As per the symmetric analysis for the synthetic CTs, the mean discrepancies with the original plan are less than 1% and without any outliers above 2% for all those volume histogram parameters, which means that the synthetic CTs could be considered clinically applicable for the treatment planning. To conclude, 
Our cycle gun model for the synthetic CT generation outperforms the state of the art and demonstrates the potential for future implementation of MR only radiotherapy. Our further work will focus on the development of quality assurance procedures. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>